So I wanted to start by talking to you about corruption. You know, I spend a lot of time talking to folks in the private sector who cite corruption as one of the key barriers to investing or entering um, many countries, particularly in Africa. So what do you see as some of the key strategies that you know, the development community can take, that governments can take to address those issues to sort of free up increased investment? From my perspective, a lot of African countries, particularly in Eastern and Southern Africa, do have mechanisms in place to ensure that companies coming in, as well as companies operating locally, are not subject to corrupt figures internally or corrupt systems. A lot of clients I deal with, for instance, have not dealt with any corruption issues when they are entering the countries in which they're operating. And so that gives me hope that eventually the narrative will change. Also, I think a lot of what's happening as the Africa Rising story continues to get stronger is a lot of African countries, as well as private sector players, are getting a bit offended with the continued stereotype that corruption is synonymous with Africa, because it's not. Corruption is a global issue, and a lot of the overarching corruption issues aren't originated in Africa. They are global issues. So whether we're going to talk about money laundering and the like, Africa's just part of the process. So I think that we need to kind of change the narrative Overall, I will say countries are trying. In Kenyatta's most recent address to the country, which has happened within the past day, he has highlighted corruption as an issue and an issue that the government is tackling. And so I do think that as the story changes, um, hopefully the story of investment in corruption will not deter people from coming to invest within the continent. As these regulations and laws are put in place to limit corruption, there is sometimes a mismatch between the implementation on the ground, uh, especially when you go below the national level to a regional or local level. What can be done to sort of make sure that as you build these sort of robust systems that they're actually being implemented and carried out in the way that they're intended? I think that's where there's a great opportunity for the aid community. Because what tends to happen is when there is a need for a certain law, um, an aid partner will help in the drafting of the law, an aid partner will help you know, go, the law to go through the process of parliament, but then it stops. So I think the role of the aid community then would be how do we popularize the law to make sure that people understand what's contained in that law? Not only people within the ministries, but also lawyers locally, investors coming in. So I think that there's a disconnect for popularization. How do you do that? Easy, one easy tactic is put it on the internet. Make sure people have access to it. Um, another thing that has worked with helping large populations understand the Constitution is make information bite size so it can be texted. And so people do understand aspects of the law. May not understand everything, but for a small business owner to say, I have X rights, I think is very empowering. Also, as far as implementation, I think that it really does also become the onus of the business to make sure they are complying with the laws that exist. A lot of times there's a debate on who the laws apply to, and I think that that conversation needs to stop. Laws should apply to everyone, and based on the amount of tax, that you're paying, you shouldn't be exempt unless you are clearly exempt, once again, based on the law. And so I think that that ability to discuss, I think needs to be reduced and everyone, foreign and local, need to be subject to the same laws.